had a little bit of time, I think we've all had a bit of time to think about the repercussions of Bahrain and what those results actually meant. And whilst it's very easy to say, oh, the high rate cars seem to have been hurt less with the new regulations, the low rate cars, it does now seem to be a bit of a pattern there. And and everybody, not everybody, but the word is that this winglet on the rear brake duct seems to be affecting the low rate cars more. So I kind of hand it over to you now and to see where you're, you're at in your mind in terms of the state of the Formula One union. Okay, well, I mean, I think if we could think back through the winter, everyone was saying that, you know, the, the, the floor edge and all of that is all uh, for sealing the diffuser, a bit like a ground effect skirt from the 70s and early 80s, and it would affect the high rake cars. Um, my opinion was a bit more balanced that there's changes to the regulations that would hurt the high rake and changes that would hurt the low rake. Um, obviously, it's difficult to quantify these, um, and some of the things would affect both both setups of car equally. I think what has come out of um, Bahrain, not so much just from the performance on track, because obviously there's lots of other factors thrown in there, but by some of the comments that the teams are making themselves. And it does seem as though that the low rate cars are hurt in particular. And again, how everyone is uh, interpreting that is, you know, it, in various ways, either just saying, well, it, it's there because the times are different or pointing at different aspects of the regulation changes. So if we can kind of summarise, the rule changes over the winter was they made a little tapered cutout to the rear part of the floor just in front of the rear tyre. A lot of people are pointing that as the reason. Um, I don't believe that is. Um, they also made the rear brake ducts, um, the lower part of the rear brake ducts, a little bit narrower. Uh, and they also changed the fence within the diffuser, which is what the McLaren found the loophole to play around with. But there's also one other bit that which we didn't really kind of highlight as a big change, but that edge of the floor now can't have any holes and slots in it. And if you've watched any of our videos over the, the past handful of years, you know, we're forever talking about the number of holes and slots in the floor edge and what they all do. And each of them have slightly different functions depending on whereabouts on the floor they are. So for the main length of the floor, the big slots that were really starting to appear over the last couple of years would affect both uh, setups of car equally, high rake, low rake, that outwash effect um, is, it was relatively equal. But what it is, is the earliest floor slots that we've really seen in modern Formula One were just in front of the rear tire. And again, we've spoken about this a lot and we use the term tire squirt. So again, just to kind of recap, when the air hits a, a big cylindrical tire, it wants to part and pass around the tire. So some of it goes over the top left and the top right, and some of it comes under the bottom left and the bottom right. And the air that spills off around the ground, uh, because it interacts with the ground, then vortices are much more powerful. And what tends to happen is when the airflow hits the tar rear tire, it shoots sideways, which is this squirt effect that we're talking about, and pushes into the diffuser. And this really upsets the diffuser performance. And over the years, whole slots and indeed the blown exhaust uh, systems in, in the latter part of the blown diffuser sort of saga uh, were all trying to clean up this area between the tyre and the diffuser. And the regulations now create quite a large bit of free space, open area where you can't have a diffuser bodywork coming up towards the rear tyre. So what you're left with is the brake duct above it or the holes in the floor above it to kind of direct airflow into that gap to stop this tire squirt going into the diffuser instead of to straighten it and pushing it back along the car's center line out the back of the car. So both cars will have issues with this. If you think about it, when you look at the shape of a tire and the height of the floor on a high rate car, a lot of the tire is actually exposed to that airflow when we'll push into the diffuser. They don't seem to have the same issue with this. And the reason this is, is largely around the brake ducts. So again, if you think of a, a tire in front uh, uh, view, it's not a rectangle. Once you go past the wheel, the, the profile starts to taper inwards before you reach the slightly narrower tread. So with a high rate car, you've got the floor butting up against the widest part of the wheel and tire, but you've also got those brake ducts, the much wider brake ducts uh, previously, were helping seal the floor and were really effective. The problem you then get with a low rake car is, although the, with the tire, the floor is much lower to it, so you get less of the tire exposed under the floor, but then that big gap between the tire and the diffuser is unprotected because the brake ducts are so much higher above it. If you remember, the brake ducts can't go lower than the wheel rim. 
So what Mercedes and uh, Aston Martin would love to do is to lower the brake ducts right down to get them to seal that hole in the floor, but they can't. And with the regulations this year where they've narrowed those brake ducts, the problem becomes bigger. And because they then can't use the slots in front of the floor to blow this tire squirt straight along the uh, uh, face of the tire, then they're really struggling with uh, means in which to, to cope with this. Well, that tends to mean that the diffuser becomes less efficient and you've got to find other ways of playing about with it. And we've certainly seen Mercedes uh, around the rear tire and actually copied uh, quite closely by Aston Martin um, at Bahrain with these big boxed in sections trying to blow the um, across the front face of the tire to try and push that tire square outboard rather than trying to straighten it up. Um, I think there's more solutions to be found in this area and I don't think this means a complete end for their uh, seasons. Um, certainly for Mercedes, their rate of development, despite what they're saying in the press, uh, will be so high that I think they will be back back in, in competitive form um, you know, with Red Bull, um, shall we say, uh, within a handful of races, probably slightly less than that. Uh, Aston Martin, obviously, they have um, resource uh, and other issues and you know they will probably take a little bit longer they may struggle through the year to find their competitiveness back to where really they should be which is kind of in the leading few teams of the midfield so yes there is a there is an issue here can you just explain a bit more why the, <clears throat> the brake duct rule hasn't hurt the high rate cars more in terms of where that gap is for them because you would imagine with the high rate car it'd be an even bigger gap and a big even bigger uh, squirt effect into the diffuser well exactly but the benefit they have is that they have in this gap between the diffuser and the tire and then you have the the brake ducts their brake duct is much closer to the floor so you can get a much more powerful effect in directing airflow along that gap when you've got a low rate car the floor's down here and the brake ducts up here and you've got this big gap and it's very hard to then create the powerful airflow that straightens the tire squirt uh, along the tire. So this is the seem to be the key reason that they're having the issue. 